All right, so when you're writing code, a lot of times you're gonna be writing the same code again and again and again. So this is an example I have of a React component. And if you're working on a React project, chances are you're going to write something like this dozens, if not hundreds of times inside one project. So it's a bit annoying to have type import React from React every single time. So with VS Code snippets, there's an easier way to do all this. Instead of typing this all out every time, what you can do is you can just assign an abbreviation for this, maybe RFC for React Functional Component, and it'll automatically just fill all this out without any additional effort for you. So let me show you how you can set up these snippets. It's pretty easy. So you start off by opening up the command palette. You can do that with Control Shift P and typing in user snippets. I believe you can also find this in the preferences, but click on that and then open up the language that you wanna write snippets for. Obviously, most of the time you don't wanna have the same snippets for every single language, as it's not gonna work. So I'm just gonna pick JavaScript for this. And as you can see, I already have a basic example right here. So another thing that you're probably gonna be typing a lot is console.log for debugging purposes. So instead of typing all that out, you can instead type CLG and it'll display. So let me just go over how this works. Let me put this over here. So this is in JSON format. So the way you set up a snippet is first you put the name of it right here, and this is going to be what's going to appear in the IntelliSense. So print the console that is right here. So pick a descriptive name, and then description is going to be a little additional description if you want. It's not super important, but if you don't remember what exactly it's gonna print, that's useful. And the prefix is going to be what you type in order to trigger it. As you can see, I type CLG and it pops this open for me. If I hit enter, it's going to render what's in the body. So the body can be whatever you want. And I'll go over this variable in a little bit, but yeah, it's basically just printing uh, what I have in the body right here. And so you can also add these tab stops is what they're called with this dollar sign one, two, three. So these are going to be where the cursor is placed whenever you finish typing the snippet. So if you see whenever I have the dollar sign one here, I'm gonna type CLG here, hit tab. And then as you can see, the cursor is already placed where the dollar sign one is over here. And if you wanna have multiple tab stops, maybe you type something here and then you hit tab and you want it to, and you want the cursor to go somewhere else. Um, you can also add a number two. So let's say we want to create a new line backslash n and then say dollar sign two. And as you can probably guess, that will write something here and you can tab and it'll put you on the next line. So it's doing exactly what you would expect here. And one more, one more uh, tab stop that you need to know about is dollar sign zero. So this is optional, you don't need to have it, but this will be the place where your cursor ends up after everything else is finished, after all the other tab stops have been gone through, and it will exit you from snippet mode. So let, let me just show you how that looks. So you type something here, type tab, and you're out of snippet mode. And now you can type anything normally. So you can also set placeholders here. So this is not the most practical example, but if you want to say something here, then you can use this syntax right here, where you're using dollar sign and then these curly brackets, and then the one and this colon right here. So what this will look like is you type CLG, and this will already be filled out with the word something. And then you can immediately type over that, like something else. If you want to, you can also just tab through it if you would rather this stay as it is. So we hit tab and then it pre-fills that with something else. You can also give yourself options with these tab stops as well. So maybe we don't want to just have console.log, we want to be able to use console.error or console.warn, something like that. So we're going to use the curly bracket syntax and let's make this the first thing, the first tab stop. And then you use these pipes right here. And then in the middle of these two pipes, you're gonna write all the different options that you're gonna have. So let's have log, warn, and error. 
And so what that's going to look like, if we save that, so we're going to type CLG. And as you can see, for this first log, oh wait, it's also, it's also selecting this because this is also number one. Let's change this to number two. And try this again. Okay, so we push CLG. And now we can also select this log right here. So we can also change it to warn or error. Then we hit tab and we continue on like you normally would. So that's useful if there's only a few predefined things that you want them to be able to select. But besides all that, there's also a few other variables that you should know about. So I don't have the full list right here, but you can check on the documentation. There's a few different variables that you can use. So for example, if you wanted to do something like this, like we want to pre-fill the name of the component and we can get the name of the component from the file name. So the file name is mailbox.js. So what we can do is we can just return, let's see what it is. It's tm file name base and this will get the file name of the current document without its extensions. So we can put this in here and whenever we type clg it will return the name of the file name. So that's how we're going to make something like this, where we can just pre-fill these values right here. It's very useful. So that's basically everything you need to know about snippets. But let me show you how to make an actual real snippet like this. That's a little bit bigger than something like a console.log. So we can add another snippet by just going like this. Let's call this React Functional Component. Let's just copy all this over. And let's make the prefix RFC, RFC for React Functional Component. And let's make the description something. All right, and so let's get started with the body. Okay, so the first line is gonna be pretty straightforward. It's going to be import React from React. Now, if you wanna have double quotes in here, you can do that, but you have to escape them with the backslash character but I'm not too particular about that, so I'll just use single quotes. Now we can make new lines with backslash n, and then we want to get the file name for this component, so of course we can do that with a variable, but I also want this to be editable, so maybe they don't want it to be the same as the name of the file name, so we want to give them the option to change that, and we can do that with the placeholder. So what we do is Set the first tab stop with the placeholder of this TM file name base right here. So basically, this is saying uh, this will be the first tab stop, but it'll already be pre filled with the file name right here. So we also want to finish the function and then let's add a new line. And then you can also add a tab character with backslash T. And then we're going to return an empty div. And we'll put the second tab stop inside here. Or actually, this is probably where we want to go after everything is said and done, after we finished uh, changing the name of this if we'd like. So let's make this the final tab stop with dollar sign zero. So after you finish with everything, it'll take you inside the div. And that's probably what you're going to want to edit first. And we can put a semicolon there, backslash n, close the function, and then we're going to export default. And then we also want this to be editable as well, basically the same way that we did as this. So you can also make multiple cursors by just using the same tab stop. And I'll show you how that looks in a minute. But we're going to say, TM, I forgot, file name, base, close that, and that should be good. So let's test this out and see if it works properly. I'm going to save all that, and we can delete all this and type RFC, and yeah, it's working exactly how I wanted it to. So as you can see, we're highlighted over this mailbox right here. If you want, you can just change it to something. And we have multiple cursors due to having uh, two number one tab stops. So you can add as many cursors as you want. And then we just push tab and it'll exit us from snippet mode and put us 
right in the middle of here, like we said with the dollar sign zero. So that's how you create a snippet in VS Code. As you can see, it's very easy, and I no longer have to tape out all of this every time I just want to have a React component. So you can add as many of these as you want, and it's extremely useful. I would recommend doing this to pretty much everything that you type on a daily basis. So of course, if you want to see all the variables, it's uh, in the Visual Studio Code docs. You can just search for that. And for a lot of languages and frameworks, there are, are already snippet libraries in the extension store. So if you want, you can download a snippet pack that has a whole bunch of different React snippets. But honestly, I don't use 99% of them. That's what I did before, and I didn't use most of them. So what I did instead is I just started creating my own snippets, and that's much better. You get exactly what you need and nothing that you don't. So I would recommend doing that with VS Code snippets.